I'm just saying. What's the point of asking if you want to set up the uh, the party audio as part of the broadcast when you've got a setting that does that exact same thing that I had to set a moment ago? A little bit odd. All right. He just wants to be sure. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully that's all it is. Hopefully it's not something screwing up somewhere. All right, folks. Well, welcome. Uh, this is the uh, Battlefront livestream podcast, for lack of a better term, number one. We did a zero that was sort of an introduction thing. Uh, again, the idea here being that uh, it's going to be playing some Battlefront, playing around with it, talking about it as we play, and uh, answering anything that pops up in the chat. So if you pop anything in there, I'll, I'll say it out loud so we can discuss it. And the hope is that each time I do this, or frequently when I do this, I'll be bringing in somebody else from the Star Wars podcasting or fandom community. And this time I have with me in the party chat, Mr. Jim Perry, a.k.a. Indiana Jim. You may know him from The Adventures of Indiana Jim, or Things Are Looking Up, or The 49ers Fancast, or from Codename Starkeeper. Uh, you may know him from the Wars novella series, so quite a few things. And uh, welcome, Jim. Hello, Nathan. Ready to Thank school you. me a little bit <laughs> with my poor, sad little level 7 character here? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm only 28, so... Yeah. You know, that's, well, it's only a little bit above it's me. It's only four times mine there. Uh, now, I'm going to show you guys All real right. quick before we start talking about <laughs> anything. Um, up here is your pick a partner item that I was talking about in the past. You click pick a partner. Uh, you pick somebody who is, in this case, part of our uh, party up here. You can see the party where it's got two out of eight, and he's right there. So pick a partner. It'll send an invitation to him, and then when he sets that up as a partner... Uh, that is where in some of the modes, some of the multiplayer modes, you'll be playing, and if you die, you can respawn on your partner, and it also will highlight him as opposed to other characters in yellow, so you can sort of tell where your partner is and work with them uh, as you play the game, as you go through and basically get your butt kicked over and over again, uh, although uh, he is a much... If you don't do it right away, if you don't oh. do it right away, it disappears, can you send Let's it again? <laughs> try that again! <laughs> and then press triangle. <laughs> And this press triangle, there we go. So Indiana Jim is now your partner. Um, I, I think actually that, that that's okay. It's just if we try to make that official in most states, they will tell us that is illegal. Um, but we're both already married, so... Oh, wait, wait, different topic, <laughs> different show. Um, so, uh, uh, Jim, tell us a little bit about what you have been involved with. And you can tell us you know, which multiplayer mode you want to go into or if you want to go into a mission. I, I'm up for just about anything but tell us a little bit about uh, uh your uh, fan audio background podcasting what are you involved in these days and what is the status what i want to know of codename starkeeper <laughs> number two. <laughs> oh, so do i um so uh i guess it was 2003 i think when i uh found your site um initially uh starwarsfanworks.com and um you know, you had uh, Star Wars Second Strike on there, so that was the first Star Wars audio drama I had listened to. Um, and I'm not sure how many other ones were already up on the site at that point. Um, but it was it was really neat to find something that had, you know, the Star Wars music and the sound effects and everything else. And, and it was free, you know, to listen to. and um, Sort of kind of, you know, like fan fiction, obviously, but it was... There was really good quality stuff. And... Um, I eventually got into podcasting around 2006. Um, mostly, initially appeared as a guest on, a, or not a guest, but a frequent voicemail caller to uh, Michael, Mike and Evo's winging it um, over, uh, you know, Dragon Page and Slice of Sci-Fi and all that. So um, instead of saying I'm Jim from Indiana, I became, you know, Indiana Jim. It just was easier and it seemed to flow good. So, bum, 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 um, bum, and then bum. Just, yeah, and then uh, of course. Um, I, along with uh, you know Joe Harrison, we produced um, Codename Starkeeper, wrote that script out in a few days, uh, and just kind of went wherever wherever the story was going. And you know, there's a lot of plot holes and contrivances, and it's you know you're not the best uh, best written thing in the world, but I was pretty proud of it. And uh, you know, uh, in the uh, Star Wars Fan Works Peer Awards, of course, swept those, which was really uh, an honor. I thought. And was also um, a finalist at the Parsec Awards at DragonCon in 2000, uh, 2009. So. Which is a rarity, by the way. Star Wars fan audio actually uh, doing something with the Parsecs uh, at all, let alone uh, 
becoming nominees and the finalists and so forth. That is a rarity. Uh, so right. Pretty uh, awesome. What apparently is not a rarity is uh, the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd winning a Parsec. That happens um, with <laughs> yeah, some that... regularity, it looks like. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, it was cool to, to be honored Dying. there. And um, uh, I'm, I'm currently, I, I haven't put out an episode in a while. It's been a while. Um, the uh, Star Wars Survival Guide is a new show. Um, kind of directed to the casual fan you know what do you, what, what's the most important things you need to know in the Star Wars world and um, I'm sitting here just running around the map because I'm rambling <laughs> yeah well you know that's, no that's the I'm way doing. live stream works I'm just running through here it's a it's a drop zone I guess I should say this is the mode that we're playing we're playing drop zone where you have to grab the uh, the escape pods as they come down and and whatnot and I'm stuttering a little bit my uh not me, but the the game is stuttering a little bit. It feels like my guy keeps getting his feet stuck just a little bit in the ground. But that's okay. That's what happens when you're trying to stream and play at the same time. Cool. So so Starkeeper two. Yeah, um, it's it's still in the uh, the script drafting phase. Um, I feel like it, you know, I, I don't. I'm not as disciplined a writer as I should be, and um, it's sort of still stewing a little bit on the on the ending where exactly to end it you know as all things star wars are, are trilogies i would i'd want to you know effectively set up uh, a third part uh, to the story and uh, sort of end it and i, I kind of know where i want to leave the characters it's just a matter of just getting the few final steps finished and then um you know kind of have the script proofed by some people that i trust like you uh <laughs> And just kind of get a feel for you know make a more make make more of a tighter story, a better focused story, um, and, and put the characters in a in a dark place at the end, uh, and then get them out um, in a to be written part three. <laughs> uh, trilogy format where basically if you're in episode two, you're screwed basically. That's right. It's act you know act two of the traditional three act structure is. George always talked about Empire being, you know. Yeah, get him into a mess. I don't, I don't have any Lawrence Kasdan handy, but I'll make do. <laughs> uh, so, folks, if you're seeing this, by the way, uh, if you check out in that sort of top right corner of my screen, every so often I'm getting a little uh, indicator of the connection to the server, and uh, that explains the stuttering that's going on. Not my stuttering from trying to do two things at once, but the stuttering actually of the... Uh, the game itself just a little bit um, and for those who are interested in Starkeeper of course um, you can still find it I know we put it in the Libsyn feed for uh, StarWarsFanWars.com so you can check it out over there yeah. you can uh, do it I mean it's the only thing with its name yeah, so just you, do a um, search for the Nathan. thing yeah if you go to uh, like VisionaryCreativeWorks.com uh, is my hub site um, and that's got a link to the project there uh, the podcasts and um, other things so. other things and uh for what it's worth folks that was uh, uh i mentioned that wow i'm getting killed from behind and everything um i did mention uh and well i guess i should show this here if he's alive at the same time i was just going to point out that partner start so i'm dead oh. and partner and start so is I. not okay so i guess partner start is not there we go so <laughs> partner start i click on well i should be able to click on as soon as one of us is alive I'm okay, a, but I'll just I'm I'll a, just hit start and whenever and the next time you'll see it that I've I've done it actually a few times you click partner start and you should see me spawn basically on top of where Jim is here and there's the yeah, little I indicator of the Wi-Fi. If it's anything like Battlefield, if your partner is under in combat or under yeah, fire, you, you cannot spawn on them. Yeah. So, so run away? No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, we I mentioned the wars thing. Now that was uh, Grail Quest Books is a little unusual as a publisher I, as, as far from what I can tell. In that it, it it tries to be sort of a close knit family to start with, and um, uh, a lot of times you'll see publishers who sort of figure out um, uh, either the team first or the story first. And I think in this case it was sort of a trying to figure out both at the same time so that we had the right people for the right jobs. And uh, when they were going through and doing the Wars: The Battle of Phobos novella series, uh, again bad connection to server. This will affect gameplay. I can tell. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's where the stuttering's coming from. But the, uh, oh, there he is, he's in yellow. Um, but no, one of the things that uh, had come up at the time was they were actually looking for someone to write. I was writing the war, the, uh, the earther side, which is sort of more of the 
capitalist big uh, corporation side of things, uh, uh, Bernie Sanders would have hated it. And they were looking for someone <laughs> to do the Mavericks, which is sort of like the Han Solo-ish side. And and Jim does a pretty mean solo impression, by the way. Um, but in the process of it, that was right around the time that I was listening to uh, Starkeeper, had just listened to Starkeeper. And it was one of those things where it was just kind of the no-brainer that if there was anybody to recommend to write something for that style and get sort of the the, the humor of almost a Pirates of the Caribbean in space type of humor. Of course, that wasn't around, I don't think, at the time, or at least it wasn't as big, um, that Jim would be the one to do it. So if you're interested in, in something that's sort of the Han Solo roguish thing, Starkeeper's a good one, but also check out his Wars novellas because he definitely carries across that same, uh, that same feeling of, you know, it's a different universe, but it's still that rogues, you know, we don't want to listen to any kind of authority. You're kind of a space hippie, basically. <laughs> just a yeah, little bit. Just and, don't, you just uh, don't have the hair for it yet, though. You need to grow that Firefly stuff out. Obviously, was a, the Firefly was a huge uh, kind of inspiration. Uh, Jack Wilgris, the main character of the Maverick series, is you know in the in the card game, uh, his card the three. There's you know there's three numbers for a rating system, and I don't remember the significance of it, but I think he's one of the very few that has all like three sevens, you know, on the card. Yeah, he's a very lucky and man. So he was kind of. He, yeah, he was kind of the natural choice to be the kind of lead character in the Mavericks side. Um, and so, you know, little Han Solo, little Mal Reynolds, a little, uh, oh, who, who else? Uh, uh, he, he's kind of a mix between Jane and Mal. I was like, both. he's got a little bit of Jane in him, just a tiny bit, but nobody's singing songs yeah. <laughs> about him that I know of. Now, I will say, and that's one of the I things know. I think that... Um, Unless they're singing the hero of Phobos, you know. The hero of Phobos. <laughs> well, yeah, we're still waiting to see how that turns out, because we're still waiting on the uh, the Volume 3s to uh, to arrive well, as I'm Deciphers available to finish kind the of... series, if I need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that it, it's... I think right now Decipher is very much caught up in other things, so it's sort of slowing things down, but... Uh, but yeah, folks, this is a, it's based on a card game is what he's talking about. It's basically um, when Decipher lost the rights to do the Star Wars CCG and everything moved over to Wizards of the Coast uh, for their TCG, Decipher took most of the mechanics from that long-beloved Star Wars CCG and used them to create their own universe with, uh, with people like Michael Stackpole involved in the creative process to make this thing called Wars. And it's basically... You have Earth, which is sort of more capitalist, more uh, uh, corporate-based, and you have a Gonjin, or Mars, which is basically more of a, a communist society, sort of a what-if communism actually worked kind of thing, um, along with some heavy Asian cultural influences, and then you have the Mavericks, who are sort of the, we're not going to belong to anybody, we're going to do our own thing, very Firefly-esque kind of people. Uh, and this book series is based on it as a prelude to leading into this event called the Battle of Phobos that takes place in the background of it, and there are three books for each faction. Uh, I wrote two of the Earther ones, Jim wrote two of the Maverick ones, so uh, it's an, it makes for an, an unusual new sci-fi mechanic. Have you ever heard of, if you have, have not heard of it, that's sort of the gist of the, the wars thing that we're talking about here, but it is another thing that's kind of familiar to Star Wars fans because they're familiar with uh, the CCG, which I miss. I miss so badly. I really wish there was a Oh, that guy had a blaster cannon. Um, I really kind of miss playing the Star Wars card games uh, more often because I just don't have as many people playing the LCG uh, around me to play with here. But uh, I'm still aching. I don't know about you. I, I'd love to see a digital Star Wars card game, though apparently the, the game rights make that impossible right now. Something, Well, something other than Force Collection huh. that sucks. I would like to see a good Star Wars digital card game to play. getting shot left yeah, and right. I've never been into the card games really. It's kind of a it's a thing I just don't understand or, you know, the never could quite get the, I don't know, feel for it, that kind of thing. It's also a bit of a money pit. I mean, I would say that now that they're, now it's a an LCG where, uh, and a guy's hiding in the corner shooting me. Uh, now that it's an LCG, at least you're not buying booster packs with random cards in it anymore, which became a bit of a money pit. I remember back in the days spending ungodly amounts when I was in, I guess, high school uh, to purchase, you know, I've got the Han Solo card, I've got Leia, I've got Luke, and 
barely ever actually getting them pulled in the middle of the game. So, it's, it's <laughs> great bragging rights for something that didn't get used nearly as much as it would have been nice to see. Oh, work my way nice around. to have when you can get it, though. Oh my goodness, we have a man shooting from the top of the sand crawler. I kind of take that as a challenge to figure out a way if I knew where the sand... There it is. There it is up there! Kind of take that as a challenge to get up on, get up here and, like, blast him off of the sand crawler, except I don't have... Oh, wait! No, I... Oh, no, we lost. I realized I have an orbital strike <laughs> sitting there I hadn't used. I could have called it down on top of his head. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Alas. Alas, this is what happens. And the people in this are, like, scratching. I'm like, oh, it is it is getting towards winter. I cannot cannot breathe. It's all, it's all scratchy. It's the day before Thanksgiving as we're recording this here. Uh, when we probably should be doing something else. So I know that you, um, uh, initially in, in playing the beta, it tended to be, at least on my feed, it tended to be sort of a yin and yang thing going on. Uh, you and Jeff Kinda, him being someone who's sort of leaning more towards the game side of things, but not as big a fan, a fan of the game. Uh, you leaning more toward the, you know, Star Wars side, being a big fan of the game. Have you found mm -hmm. that anything about, please have the server stop sucking? Um, have you found that um, there's anything so far that has particularly surprised you jumping in from uh, from going from the beta into the the standard game? Was there anything unexpected that has become part of the game, or that um, that kind of took you by surprise? You know, I don't necessarily think anything took me by surprise. You know, a lot of the uh, the the game details, you know, the different game types was kind of released before the game came out, so you, you know, sort of knew what to expect. Um, I am honestly, I mean, I'm pretty surprised at the just the variety of, of game modes for for an online game. Um, it seems to have a lot of different things to occupy your time. You know, um, you can get on Call of Duty or or Battlefield, and there's a lot of different game modes, but some of them are like just ghost towns. I mean, nobody's playing in them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the only thing where you can find games with a lot of people is either Team Deathmatch or um, the Conquest mode or whatever in, in Battlefield. So, and same with Call of Duty. You either have Team Deathmatch or, you know, a couple other modes and then nobody else is playing um, anything else. But in Battlefront, it seems like, at least initially, you know, you can find a full game on any of the modes uh, at right. any time you want. So, I think that I like that. Um, I, mean, I guess just the way the levels are designed, because uh, you, you and I both agreed, I think initially that that the one map they had uh, for Sullust in the beta um, was just not great. I mean, it was just kind of an open lava field, and it didn't have yeah. a lot of variety to it. Um, yeah. Which I which I think was hurt, was hindered. Yeah, it's hindered by the fact that your jumps really... I mean, they're, they're, they're battlefield jumps as opposed to jumps that you would get with, say, like a Destiny. So you don't have a lot of lift, and you're basically in a situation where uh, there was a lot of cool ridges and stuff on Sullust, but you really couldn't get onto them very easily. So it, it still felt very flat for right. all the elevation it had, yeah. And, and then the Hoff, of course, was just a wide open, kind of wide open snow field with some interesting things but visually just kind of you know a big snowy landscape just like we see in the movie but I think later um, playing in this when you get into the the echo base and that was still in there but the, the ice caves level uh, here we're playing on Endor mm -hmm. just the kind of the sheer vastness of these levels the different places you can go and different routes you can take to get to your objectives and it just it makes the gameplay interesting to me and I think I was really pleased to see there was a little more you know thought in the level design and especially the the one on Tatooine um, the Walker Sultan supremacy map I really feel like that's that's really good and the one we just played the Jawa refuge map I, I really like so I think I, I was pleasantly surprised that the level design was was 
better when you got to the full game and I mm -hmm. you know I felt like that would be the case anyway but it's good to see you know <laughs> I will say uh, you still have people out there who are saying because there's only four planets you know you have Tatooine Endor Forest Moon of Endor that just says Endor Hoth and Solus you still have people saying well there's only four maps and that's crap I mean if you actually look at it there's three different mm -hmm. maps for Tatooine you've got or sorry four different maps for Tatooine and three for all the other ones so, I mean, it's yeah. 13 maps, and I don't know, I'm assuming, have you seen the, the information, I guess it was released either today or yesterday, about uh, the Battle of Jakku, they're finally giving details about the expansion? Yeah, I think I think it said there were only going to be uh, two right, two levels on Jakku, I think, uh, two maps and then a new, a new mode, yeah. Um, yeah. which I forget. I already forget what it was. Called, turning points or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but turning yeah, so, point. Yeah, so you have, so you have three objectives. So five planets now. Yeah. Right? Sorry, go ahead. I said, so five planets now, and, and that's going to make 15 different maps. Um, I think I, I am expecting to see at least some level of people immediately griping about the Battle of Jakku DLC because I think they're going to expect it to be something that it's not. I think people are hearing Battle of Jakku and they're thinking, well, this is going to be recreating the battle. This is going to be a story mission, and this game doesn't have story wow. missions. Um, I mean, we've seen a little bit of the Battle of Jakku thanks to uh, the Lost Stars novel, um, but I'm hoping that people go into it realizing they're talking about a setting. I mean, it's just like you could say that these, in, these Forest Moon of Endor maps, that they are Battle of Endor maps, or there's Battle of Hoth maps. Because they're right. sort of, I mean, they're on those locations, but they're based around the events in the film as their, their backdrop in a lot of ways. Hopefully people will keep that in mind about Jakku and they're not going to immediately think, uh, oh, this is crap, man. Especially when it's free. <laughs> right. How dare yeah, you give and, uh, me something for free? Yeah. <laughs> socialist? Yeah. Um, hmm? <laughs> give me something for free, socialist. There you go. Oh right, yeah. Bernie Sanders would love it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you have mm -hmm. all your your political people say say, is battle because you know that that you know you can make something political out of it. Is Battlefront promoting socialism? It's like shut up. Oh, shot from above. That. No, that's just that's just me spouting crap because you can turn. I mean, if you can have people <laughs> saying that that uh, that because uh, Finn. Uh, is a black character, and and there's so much diversity in the Force Awakens that it somehow promotes what was it they calling white white annihilation or something stupid that the little the tiny right. Twitter group did, and all of a sudden it became this huge <laughs> this huge media thing. Like all these people want to boycott the film. By all you mean like ten, right? Maybe <laughs> possibly. <Right. laughs> yes, all ten of them want to. Yes, that is that is very true. <laughs> but it's only just those ten. Well, yeah, yeah and that, well, that didn't last very long, so... <laughs> no. yeah, thankfully, sanity generally will... Well, usually will win out. I want to say generally will win out, because, yeah, not always. And why does it keep giving me this mm -hmm. I, this bad connection thing? I keep, like, I'm walking, and it's like... Kuch, kuch. I feel like I'm trying to think of a... Oh, a, some kind of sci-fi thing, some kind of film, where, like, seeing people stutter... Was an indica Was it the Matrix even that seeing something stutter was an indication that there was something wrong mm -hmm. with reality? So yes, yeah. my character, my bald rebel who's running around, is apparently caught up in the Matrix of some kind. Makes it a little bit difficult. Yeah, I to haven't, I haven't had any uh, too many of those issues. You know, here and there. Um, yeah, like yeah I haven't had a few it. hiccups in the chat, but. I've had it. I had it back whenever I was doing the uh, the beta, but I this is the first time I've actually run into that on the final game. But that could very well be on my end with the uh, uh, with the stream also going and sucking up some of that that bandwidth trying to go up to YouTube. I did learn the lesson of don't try to upload something to YouTube on your computer when you're also trying to stream to YouTube because it will go <laughs> and die like uh, Captain Nita. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. I'm pretty sure that I just threw a detonator, or whatever you call it, one of the explosives, and because I died before it exploded, it didn't explode. Yeah, I've noticed that on a, uh, several occasions. Like, I, I figured that I thought that was a rule. You know, no, no lucky, huh. uh, 
lucky kills after you die, but then later on, um, I guess at some point last night I noticed it was allowing it, so I don't know yeah. if it's an occasional, you know, error thing, or if it's something that they actually intended not to let happen, I don't, I don't know. Well, we did just find out in the, uh, uh, in, gosh, what was it, in Beware the Power of the Dark Side, that uh, apparently a thermal detonator can only be turned on or turned off by the same person. If you're the one that activates it, you cannot... Uh, no one else can deactivate it. It's somehow biometric, which I found interesting. Oh, right. Which seems strange to me, but... Yeah. <laughs> Better hope that the person who threw it is still standing beside it. Wait a second. Oh. I'm... On my way to... Oh, wait. I am a rebel. So, why do I care? Why are you warning me that it'll soon be under rebel control? I am a rebel. Yeah. Yeah, not a big fan not of the stuttering, so but not often. An encouragement. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that, that is one thing. If you guys are looking for... Oh. Blown the hell up. Um... If you're looking for, sorry, I keep scratching my knives. I was like, yeah, it's time to live stream. Crap, I haven't shaved. It's time to go in and shave real quick, except it's so freaking crazy weather outside that I feel like now that I've shaved, it's like I got sandpaper under my nose now. Uh, so I keep scratching. The, uh, uh, the new adaptations were actually pretty interesting. Um, you had uh, the princess... The Scoundrel and the Farm Boy, which turned out to be kind of weird just in the sense that it's retelling A New Hope, but it's doing it split up. So you've got the mm -hmm. first, like, third of the book is Leia's perspective, and then you've got another third from Hans, and then the last third from Luke. So uh, you do get some new scenes added into it, like, did Leia ever try to escape while she was captive? Uh, that sort of thing. I thought that was kind of interesting and, and sort of seeing inside Han's head as he makes the decision to stick around and, you know, or we keep thinking return to help Luke at the very end, but he's not quite as as heartless as it's made out to be at certain points. But then again, you know, he never shot first anymore. Uh, then you've got So You Want to Be a Jedi that is just uh, The Empire Strikes Back on crack, more or less. Uh, what if the current mm -hmm. Doctor Who doctor was telling the story after having seen The Empire Strikes Back years ago. and he, But he's telling the story to someone who's never seen it, so who cares if he gets it wrong? Uh, it's bizarre, but kind of amusing once you turn your brain off. You die too, <laughs> huh? Uh, yes, yeah, somebody just killed Indiana Jim. And then you've got uh, Beware the Power of the Dark Side that adds little details here and there, like... Uh, Jabba never actually intended to pay Bush the 25000 he finally agrees to after the thermal detonator. He plans to make Bush pay slowly. Um, Mon Mothma sitting out the Battle of Endor at a safe location. Uh, the only rebel ship to fly in the opposite direction of the Death Star whenever everything gets going. Um, just those kind of things. And the, the way that they handle the very end and the redemption of Vader and so forth, there's... There's a lot to be said for those books, despite the fact that somebody dismissed them as young readers. So, uh, in fact, I just did a series of reviews of those for Beyond the Films, just not on the podcast. It's all over at StarsReport.com as a text thing. Um, are you finding that uh, you're following any of the newer, uh, new canon materials, the comics, books, or anything? Or are you just sticking to um, film right now? Um... I've uh, read as much as I could so far. Um, uh, I feel like it, it's interesting that I've noticed some people complain that, like, Lost Stars, for instance, was uh, supposedly billed as a young adult novel, mm -hmm. but it reads every bit as much like one of the other, you know, any of the other expanded universe yeah. novels. Yeah. Well, shoot, it's uh, the it only Star Wars young. book so far that has active sex in it, isn't it? That we know of? I mean, there's hinted stuff, but that's the only one that's like, well, yeah, damn. Right. <laughs> and I've reached rank 29, by the way. I uh, no. <laughs> suck. I'm still sitting here at seven with a horrible, horrible yellow, white, yellow, white, yellow, white connection. Um, <laughs> tell you what, let's show them um, a, thought... diff a different mode here. Let's um, let's okay. check out that fighter squadron mode because I think that's one mode that I haven't shown at all. It's mostly been been ground combat when I've been running the stream here. Uh, and those of you who are in the 
whatchamacallit, in the uh, the chat here, the viewers, uh, feel free to say something. As Chris has said hello, so hello, Chris. Um, I tried to say that earlier, like, just if you could read my, my lips. Um, Hi, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, because he won't be able to see it. I'll be able to see it, but he won't be able to see it unless he's trying to watch it at the same time that he's gaming, which would explain some of our uh, uh, getting killed easily. <laughs> but yeah, I think that that Lost Stars is, I think it's very underrated because I mean it's a, it's it's billed as that young adult novel. I think it's the best novel that they've done so far, in mm -hmm. uh, in the new canon and whatnot, the story group canon, Disney canon, whatever you want to call it. Um, but you, you said people yeah, are criticizing I would, I would it for. I agree with that. I immediately thought you were going to say because they keep running into the movies, and because that's the, that's the big thing I've been hearing is oh. why does everybody have to be running into the movies? And that, I mean, that's kind of the point of that is sort of give them a way to mm -hmm. um, uh, to to go together. Uh, Chris says that you could pull up the chat on your own if you want. I didn't know that was possible. I haven't actually tried it, so that'd be kind of cool. Uh, all right, so I'm sitting, oh, yeah, and this um, is one ugly man. With, uh, one of the podcasts, I, uh, I don't remember if it was full of Sith or who it was. Somebody had a, uh, or maybe it was the Cantina cast. It was an interview with Claudia Gray, um, and she was talking about that, that when they approached her to write this, that was the set. That was the whole setup. It was Star Crust lovers, you know, yeah. interact with this story. Uh, as has happened in the films, you know, it's, it's sort of a use the moments, the big moments from the films as a, as a touchstone for, yeah. for this. So it was kind of, you know, by intent. But um, I think so far the only thing I haven't I haven't read uh, the Leia or the Lando comic series, though I hear the Lando one's pretty good. From Lando one's Lando one's all right. Leia. Uh... Uh, <laughs> uh yeah, mixed, it it exists. Mixed. I think that's that's a really good thing I could say for that the land the Leia series is that it exists. Mm -hmm. Blown up a little bit there. So, the, have you been reading Chewbacca? Uh, well, I think I've read the first one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, they're on the second to last. I, the fourth one came out today, and I'm thinking, yes, it's almost over, because I've just not been digging it. But, of course, it says, no, to be concluded. Yes, there is a fifth one. Like, uh, crap. I thought it was, you know, what I read, I thought it was cute. You know, it wasn't... I, I just kind of feel, I guess my thing is, I sort of feel like, why are you constantly telling me stories that don't matter? You know what I mean? Right. I know that everybody wants to get to The Force Awakens and then start tying stuff together, because you don't want to spoil anything, but... Damn, you know the, it just doesn't feel like it matters. I, the game is now telling me how to do evasive maneuvers. I've gotten killed enough times. It's like, ah, uh, you realize you can dodge, right? <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah. There we go. And I will say, and Chris says he's holding out for the omnibuses. Z, 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 z. I always say omnibuy. I don't think that's correct. But I always say omnibuy anyway, because it's Latin. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I will say one thing that they don't point out, and I think I've mentioned this before in the talking about the the game here. But one thing that is not pointed out very much, if at all, in the game, but something that I learned from the guide actually to it is that uh, if you look down at that yellow thing down at the bottom, the yellow and orange bar, uh, as you speed up, you are diverting power to your engines from your weapons. As you slow down you're diverting power from engines to weapons. So you're basically, um, slowing down doesn't just make it perhaps easier to be accurate. Slowing down actually makes your weapons on your vehicles more powerful if it's a, a starfighter. I don't believe it works like that for any of the ground-based vehicles. But I, was, I found that kind of an interesting dynamic because you wouldn't expect that. I mean, I, at least I don't think we, that's a natural thing to expect, but it makes for an interesting element of strategy to your speed on this mode. Mm -hmm. well, I do find it interesting that you can play as a TIE Fighter or a TIE Interceptor. Why would I want to play as a regular TIE Fighter? It's just not right. as cool. I've yet but, to play then, as a hero ship, though, on this, so... Yeah, I've gotten... I don't know. I've killed them, <laughs> but I've not actually played as yeah. them. 
That's the thing, like I've, I've gotten like the power up for Slave 1 a couple times and the first time the round was immediately over. Oh, uh, like <laughs> and, that? And the second time I, I had grabbed it and then immediately hit the wall and blew up. <laughs> yeah, they're not very sturdy ships. They smack the wall and they die. This isn't a, a like some other games where you're flying and you can bounce off of anything. I learned that very quickly. Probably the only person yeah, who started playing the first tutorial ran into the wall and went, shit, and restarted the tutorial immediately. I didn't even get through the first tutorial before I restarted. <laughs> yeah, if there's any mode that leaves me profoundly frustrated most of the time, it's Fighter Squadron. <laughs> really? Yeah, I just, I, just it because... just makes for an interesting, just a different thing to me. I just, It's not something that I'm... Uh, that I would expect. Is there a particular mode you want to jump into? I just want to show that real quick to make sure that people got a chance to actually uh, see the... Uh... Droid Run would be cool. Sure. Yeah, Droid Run is an interesting one in that, uh, for those who haven't seen Droid Run yet, it's it's basically you're trying to capture three points, except the points are moving, albeit slowly, because they're gonk droids. Uh, I, I The only experiences I've had with it so far, though, have felt very much like the big criticism of it, which has been, well, really the only... Only the last minute really tends to matter unless you actually get all three at once. Mm -hmm. That it's it comes down to you know the timer runs out and then whoever gets it first gets it. It seems like, um, but it's it's a certainly an interesting take on on capture mode. Mm -hmm. uh, now you uh, Chris here mentions that waiting for the omnibus or omnibuses or omnibuy or however you're supposed to say that, and uh, one thing that bothered me very early on and I ranted about it plenty on uh, uh, Beyond the Films particularly because of how it inflated Marvel's sales numbers was the fact that they had mm -hmm. a lot of variant covers like over a hundred variant covers if you count the oh, store yeah. exclusives uh, and they did it for so many different um, uh, issues it wasn't even just the first issues of the series they actually had it for the others where are you going? <laughs> you're just running around in a circle going? I was like where are you going? I'm, I'm just like running towards the red thing that says claim um uh, they eventually did put out a, a basically a trade paperback that is nothing but the covers of the variants. How did you feel about the variant thing? Was that and, and Marvel's claim, you know, this is you know, it's this best selling this that or the other comic of the year or of Star Wars or of all time or whatever? Do you feel like that's legit given the number of variants? Should that count? Shouldn't it count? Um. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting thing. I hadn't really thought of it because um, I'm not much of a, a comics reader. Um, I'm mainly into it because you know I want to know what happens. I want right, to know what right. the canon story is um, and the developments that surround it. You know, and that's pretty much where I'm coming you mean, from. You mean you're not um, collecting comics for investment? Kinda, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it does anybody. It's kind of gimmicky. I hope nobody does. It does seem kind of gimmicky to say, you know, well, we sold these many copies, but you have these many different covers that you want people to collect, and it does seem a mite sketchy, but that's yeah. uh, I mean, a publishing business thing that I'm not really terribly into. And I guess, I guess it does say something when you have a lot of people buying all your different variant covers, you know. True. That is true. But hunting you know, them down. Uh, now speaking right. of, speaking of artwork, uh, I guess one thing that I could point out, uh, your first Wars novella, and actually mine and your first Wars novellas, uh, got illustrated treatments. And in your case, you actually not only had an illustrated version, you could get as a, uh, since it's a trade paperback style, but it's a graphic novella. It's the mm -hmm. actual, it's it's the prose of his story, folks, plus uh, artwork to go with it. And yours actually had annotations with it too. What? How did you actually mm -hmm. go about that? Was that something where you knew that it, that it was coming, so you you were working on annotations as you wrote, or did you go back after the fact and do your annotations? Yeah, no, it was actually after the fact. Um, I had written it, um, you know, and Josh, I guess, editor, Cassandra edited it, or whoever did at Grail Quest, and uh, then it came up later. Hey, we're, we're going to do this illustrated version. I kind of knew that was coming, but it was kind of, and we, you know, we kind of like to add some annotations. So, you know, Josh gave me a, a number. I don't know if it was ten or whatever. You know, so many things. So I had to kind of narrow it down to, you know, kind of what are the top ten things that I would like people to know either about the writing process or, or the inspiration behind whatever you know was seen here or, or what have you. And so I just kind of wrote those out, and it was interspersed with uh, details from the card. Uh, mm -hmm. Card lore, you know, or the game lore, or whatever. 
Did you I find that that was pretty neat? You know? Did you find that made it uh, a an easier or a tougher task? I mean, I I think it's 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 a tricky thing when you're writing in somebody else's universe. But we had we essentially had just the cards and and some RPG stuff to go on. Did you find that it was easier to write with that background existing, or was it more of a constraint because you wanted to make sure everything fit it? You know, I thought it was. I really thought it helped because it kind of gave me a structure that I didn't have to make up myself. You know, it was kind of, okay, I, ha I have these constraints and I feel like, you know, just like the uh, the folks that have worked on the Expanded Universe novels and, and they have to take certain things that are written and, and you know, get with each other and, and figure out what's what uh, between their own, between their plots and their characters. And I think, you know, it, ma it forces you to be more creative with how you write your story. You know, on the one hand, it seems easier. Well, you know, it's easier just to make everything up and, and do it yourself and um, just be your story. But um, I felt like it was maybe a little more challenging, but also a little more fun, I thought. Cool. And it's kind of, the, you know, same process I went through when I was writing Codename Starkeeper. It was, you know, of course, I, I would go through your entire uh, Star Wars timeline gold. Uh, available at StarWarsFanWorks.com. So it was a uh, so it was a uh, ten year process because you went through the whole thing. <laughs> 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 well, it was big, but you know, and I, I confined myself to certain areas of the of the saga, you know, and I kind of wanted to use that uh, Return of the Jedi as the touchstone, you know, so everybody kind of knew mm -hmm. where the thing was, and so I'd had experience doing doing it that way, and you know, figured out well what planets do I want to include, um, how do I make sure that. Um, Corn Horn and Isla Wasiri from the X-Wing series, you know, what part of their careers are we, you know, talking about here? And it's well before Corn obviously became uh, part of Rogue Squadron, but, and so that was fun. Um, and, and that's kind of the same, it was the same process I'd taken in reading, you know, with the Wars. It was like, let's look at the cards. What do the cards say? What does the RPG mm -hmm. material say? You know, what setting are we at? And, and where do we need to go? And, and you know, trying to set up some of the things that happened to Jack Wilgris later on down the road. Right. And, uh, you know, and I've been meaning to ask Josh how things were going on the third Mavericks book because it seemed like it wasn't going anywhere. And, um, you know, I'm I'm still available. I'm still available. Yeah, I think that I we're at a point. that sucker off. I think we're at a point <laughs> where everything's just about basically written. We're just waiting on uh, uh, some final thoughts from a very, very busy decipher, and I just kind of, I keep crossing my fingers that the next thing that I'm going to see in my email will be, hey guys, we're good to go, because the plan, I think, was also to eventually, uh, like right now, for those who are interested in getting it, uh, they're available as ebooks. I just look up Wars, the Battle of Phobos, but there's also, oh, see, we got all three of them, so now if it counts down and gets all the way to zero, we win, without somebody, without the other side reclaiming them. Um... So you can get them individually as ebooks, but then each set of three, like the volume one of all three factions, that I mentioned the volume two of all three factions, were put together into, up. Oh, they took one, or are taking one. Uh, they get put together into a trade paperback version uh, in print, and then eventually, once we get to a point where uh, all the volume threes are out, there would be probably these like collector's hardbacks, probably, that would include volume one, two, and three of of a given faction instead of it being volume one of each faction, two of each faction and such. Um, but all of that is still sort of waiting on Decipher at this point. That should be that should be a um, uh, a movie name, Waiting on Decipher. Isn't there mm -hmm. like a Waiting on Godot or something? <laughs> waiting for Godot. <laughs> waiting for Godot. <laughs> I was like, I know yeah. I heard that somewhere. And I don't know, I, <laughs> I know nothing about that film, but isn't that the name of the woman who's playing Wonder Woman now? So is it maybe about the production of Wonder Woman? Is that what that book's about? No. Maybe. Maybe. Probably not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't probably. Know. I, I would imagine probably not, but, but we give it a try. It's G-A-D-O-T. Oh, well, shoot. You know spelling doesn't matter. If if Chuck Wendig could throw grammar out the window for Aftermath, then we know that, that I know. spelling too doesn't soon. matter. Too soon. <laughs> I know. Too, too soon. Too soon. Too um. soon. Star Wars oh, after a actually we just did our episode on that. It's actually a, a, a decent story, albeit not one that people expected. It's just I, I I think I think it's funny that it's kind of like it's the it's the book where uh, punctuation marks other than period go to die. So. Mm hmm Well, and um, I know Chuck is not you know the biggest fan of uh, say the prequels you know who which endure 
uh, much criticism from many circles, but mm -hmm. um, the fact that he included, you know, one of the main characters uh, constructs a droid from mm -hmm. you know, battle droid parts, uh, and, and I guess Mr. the personality Bones. chip is all out of whack or <laughs> something, yeah. and um, so and, and I've noticed, you know, there's some use of prequel materials, even though people are saying, oh, we want to stay, stay away from the prequels, you know, it's all about, you know, yeah. the stuff that they give about practical effects, and, yeah. you know, the stuff that people want to say, oh, see, they, you know, J.J. Abrams hates the prequels, and here's why, and it, no, um, no, not no. really, the, the story group is, is making use of certain things, or right. allowing use of certain things as, as it's merited, you know. Yep. In fact, speaking of, I'm in the process right now of a canon rewatch, as I call it. I just jumped into my own orbital strike. I'm a moron. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, uh, I'm in the process of a canon rewatch of basically just the the finished video stuff. So I'm not doing the story reels, but I'm doing I, I'm doing all the the six live action films on Blu-ray plus all of Clone Wars, all of. Uh, uh, Rebels, and I just actually finished right before we did the live stream. I just watched Ahsoka's final episode of Clone Wars, and it's interesting that uh, for as much crap as we give the prequels at times, as as sort of a fandom in general, I think a big chunk of fandom gives it crap. Um, they, they opened up a lot for Star Wars, and I I still find that I, I'd say still find I now find that probably the most emotionally impactful moment that I run into within Star Wars, maybe because I've seen the movie so many times that I'm almost numb to it because the emotional impact has already been had so many times, um, but Ahsoka walking mm -hmm. away uh, virtually brought me to tears today, having already seen it before. And I, I think, you know, people... I don't know. We have a tendency to... Maybe it's the internet culture, as I was called out on a, uh, a while back, but it seems like... Uh, we tend to be very picky with anything new that is Star Wars, as a mm -hmm. maybe it's an internet culture thing, rather than you know the originals. There's tons you could pick apart about the original trilogy, but now that they're considered film classics, you know we pick apart the special editions, we'll pick apart the Blu-ray changes, but you don't really pick apart the mm -hmm. classics. Yeah, and that's I think um, that's kind of the problem inherent in the Phantom Menace. You know, to begin with, was the anticipation and the the, the widespread cultural acceptance that the the Star Wars trilogy, as manifested, you know, was considered a masterpiece. You know, mm -hmm. by many people, a science fiction masterpiece. You know, a clinic on movies. You know, maybe in Return right. of the Jedi, not as much, but certainly the the first movie and and. Also, you know, the Empire Strikes See, Back is. He's been, saying uh, that, but Jedi deified. is now my favorite installment of the original trilogy. It's probably my favorite Star Wars film now, and I don't know why. Well, Return of the Jedi always was for me, but it was mostly because that was the first film I had seen in the theater. I was six years old, you know, and uh, we played Star Wars on the playground. You know, the Jungle Gym was the Millennium Falcon, and that was kind of. The slide was the Sarlacc pit. And <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, and that was. Which we just say, I think I, I think we played a similar value. way. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, for but me, it was it was to, in uh, Jedi. As a kid. If you go to uh, sto storywonks.com, mm -hmm. uh, Alistair Stevens has done a really good uh, series on story and Star Wars. Uh, very very deep analytical uh, series on on the story structure, the plot, and. The, influences and just really makes you actually consider um, the stories from a from a dramatic standpoint you know especially um, right. <clears throat> when it comes to like the prequels and he kind of oh, so the prequels are why, on there yeah the prequels cool. are there um and and kind of especially what was most interesting to me was the breakdown of the story structure in episode two and how just there were certain set pieces that like the chase through coruscant went on too long um, the Battle of yeah. Geonosis went too long, um, but he also kind of breaks down why the Obi-Wan detective story actually works from a dramatic standpoint, mm -hmm. even though I think in, it suffers in the movie from being uh, distracted by the whole love story angle. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, think I think that's the biggest weakness, and most of that is because of the, most of that's because of the, uh, the performances, honestly. Um, I mean, Romeo and Juliet will never die, um, and that's that's. Well, actually, Romeo Romeo and Juliet, 
The whole point was that they died, son. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what okay, you mean. Though. I see what you did. I see what you did. Yeah, yeah, but, that's good. But, but yeah, I know, as, although as a dramatic device. It's yeah. to, to make the to make the comparison there. It's interesting that you that you that that's the comparison you bring up because I. I've become sort of more of a Shakespeare guy in the last few years, especially Hamlet. Huge Hamlet fan, and just constantly, I mean, just like devouring all the different film interpretations. I've, you know, read it, listened to this great uh, audio dramatization version of it so many times, and I've sort of started to branch out and get back into ones that I remember reading when I was younger, but I hadn't read in a long time, like Romeo and Juliet. And it strikes me, good lord, Romeo and Juliet, I. I there's a part of me that wonders how did that become a classic because of, mm -hmm. I mean, how, they're teenagers who think, wow, I'd like to, I, I, it's, I'd say, it's love at first sight. It's them looking at each other across the room and saying, boy, would I like to bone him or her. And then the entire rest of the thing is an overdramatic, let's try to get into so-and-so's pants. Except back then you had to get married to get in the pants. So let's get married so I can get into your pants. And then, oh God, I can't be with you for a little while. I'm going to kill myself. Um, rather than, I don't know. There's just, there's so many aspects of Romeo and Juliet that I appreciated when I was a teen. And now that I'm an adult, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, you stupid people, you know? <laughs> Which probably makes me a pariah right. from a... From a, 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 a literary standpoint, how dare you dislike Romeo and Juliet well, and love Julia yeah, Shakespeare? You're a, history you're, a, you're a history teacher, not a uh, literature teacher, so you know. This what is do true. You know? I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do I know about literature? I like reading science fiction, oh. which people still say. I, I still have people telling me science fiction doesn't count as literature, and I want to beat them. But you know, I try not to because I don't like are jail. What we call morons. Yeah. I don't think jail would suit me well. I'm kind of a little guy, and and I, I don't think my butt could take it. You are you are a real pretty man. <laughs> <laughs> you got a purr in my house. <laughs> that is a, that is a scary thing uh, you know, coming from coming from a man seen... that I've shared a room with at Con Carolinas. That is a scary scary thing to say. It kind of makes me wonder. Mm. Uh, there we go. You know, I've never actually watched Shawshank Redemption all the way through. I don't think I have either, but isn't Purdy Mouth from, uh, was that Shawshank? I thought that... I thought that, it was. Was it Shawshank? Okay, I, 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 I'm getting myself confused. I keep thinking Warren Beatty. <laughs> yeah, was that... Oh! Oh, and I killed him! I had a guy almost take me out just then. I got down to three health and I killed him and I was stuttering the entire time. That's right, that's when somebody says, You're cheating because you got like a lag switcher. Nope, nope, the connection just blows. Thanks. Yeah, I did notice I had a little stuttering on this map just a little bit ago. For the first, that's the first time I've seen it since I've been playing. And I've been playing a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know, Mr. <laughs> Level 29 or whatever, fine. Oh! Yeah, I'm at the point where I was just excited the other day. I was like, I got my first charge star card. Yay! That's how little I've been. <laughs> oh, and I stepped in. I hate... That's one thing I despise about this map. I'm just going to stand here until it kills me. Sitting in the... Uh, or uh, uh, where you can fall into little lava pit type sulfur holes. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what the heck was happening back during the beta. I was like, what am I stepping in? And they'll spawn you right in front of one like it just did for me. I would say probably what you were, you know, stepping in was icky, icky goo. Icky, icky goo. Oh, that was me yesterday. <laughs> uh, if you caught it on Facebook, we, uh, I got up. Matt Wilkins, uh, who is, who does a, I think his username on uh, YouTube is Kid Card Co. Uh, if that's how you're supposed to say it, but he is, he's done a lot of. Um, uh, YouTube videos actually knew him, knew of him from there. He had contacted me saying, "Hey, well, why don't we do a, a a podcast interview thing?" So we're getting ready to do the interview, and the very first thing, uh, like I'm getting ready to do it, and first I take a leak right beforehand and manage to have the the water not go down. So I'm like, "Crap, I guess I got to deal with that afterwards." Um, the first thing he hears from me is me realizing there's a cat turd on the floor. Uh, and having to get that up, like, literally, it's like, hello, oh, crap, what is that? Uh, and as soon as I got done with the interview, I go in and realize, hey, the water's gone down. It's good. Flush it just to see. Yeah, that was a stupid idea. And I spent 
a good couple of hours, you know, getting maintenance to come and fix the toilet, cleaning up the bathroom, and then I just said, screw it and clean the rest of the apartment. So, uh, yes, when it comes to icky goo, I've had my fill of that. I don't need it from my Battlefront no. map. Uh, now, Flyboy Jack 87 says, uh, did you see Ian McDiarmid recite some lines from Star Wars Shakespeare at Celebration 6? I actually did not see it. Um, I heard about it, and kind of with, now that you've mentioned it, I'll probably look it up on YouTube. I hadn't even remembered it. Uh, but yeah, the Star Wars Shakespeare stuff was really good. The only thing, hey, I'm rank 8 now. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the Star Wars Shakespeare, uh, well, okay, two things. One is sometimes it does get, it does try a little too hard to recreate the actual lines from Shakespeare. Um, it, it's mm -hmm. better once you get to like Empire and Jedi where he's not doing that as much. But the only other thing I can complain about is just the fact that the prequels, the prequels Shakespeare ones don't have audio dramas yet because the audio performances uh, of the classic trilogy Shakespeare versions by Desher are fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. And I didn't oh, yeah, expect I, that. And I, I had seen the video and it was, it was pretty amazing. Uh, it was, the dialogue really easily led him right back into the Palpatine voice and... Mm -hmm. It was it was pretty great. Yeah. Speaking of Palpatine voice, the Tim Curry change. I just hit that in a in my canon rewatch. The Ian Abercrombie to Tim Curry change. Yeah. And that's a that's a that's a bit of a vocal groin pull, so to speak. But I will say that. Was, that, that, that was a, uh, well, he he had one line I think in the last of the mall when he said, "They're just petty crooks." I'm like, "Oh my God! Just why didn't you just drop that line? Seriously." Just don't make him say it. Just just do the whole episode as Abercrombie or a whole one as Curry because, boy, was that one rough. Yeah. Uh, it was a casting choice. I didn't really... I love Tim Curry usually. Oh, yeah. In pretty much everything, but... Yep. As Emperor Palpatine, it just doesn't work. <laughs> okay, I, just, I kept picturing Richelieu, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> That could be a right. I want those musketeers. <laughs> Not excuses, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite films, though, I must say, the, the the Disney. I don't care how many times you remake the Three Musketeers. The 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 the, the Kiefer Sutherland Save the King is still a moment that gives me chills right. every time. I don't know why. Yeah. Pro probably because I've Michael seen him go after terrorists with... so many times now. <laughs> Michael came in with the score on that. That was uh, one yep. of his. Mm-hmm. Best he knew how to milk the drama. Yep. Pro one of the first non-Star Wars scores I ever bought, actually, was that one. Because I was not a big instrumental score guy for a while. Uh, Jamie Lee Wood asks yeah. in the chat, uh, "Who's your favorite hero?" Uh, uh, I guess we we'll guess start with the game. I'm not in sure if he's asking game. for the game or uh, if we're talking Probably about just game, in honestly. general. So in the game, actually, I haven't had a chance to really play with them as much. I kind of like. I guess Vader's the one that I had the most fun playing with when I've played with them, but God, I mm -hmm. hate the recreated voice that they did for him because it's like it's like what happens if you take Vader and you either cut his balls off or maybe with Mustafar burn his balls off because his voice is so horrible in this game. Yeah, you know, I feel like the actor did pretty good, I think, to get the inflections. Um, he's obviously not James Earl Jones. They, they, they just um, need to... I mean, just go in... I, we could do it in Audacity. Go in and lower... The the the, <laughs> the, the, the the just shift it lower so he sounds like Vader instead of sounding like uh, uh like me talking into a fan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I love my love my faith disturbing. I mean, I don't know. I just right. I'm surprised yeah. that they didn't. Um, I mean, you would think at this point, but I guess they did the same thing to uh uh, uh the original Matt well, Matt this, Lucas. Um, where they where they would change hey, the voice Nathan. actors. Yeah. Let's do. Uh, let's go go into um, heroes versus villains. Sure. Yeah, we could actually try this out. Heroes versus villains. Which is fun. I love yeah, the, the, the he, dynamic of heroes versus villains, where it's sort of a you randomly uh -huh. get one of the three, and if you kill one of the three, you get to be one of the three next time because it, it gives you a sense of of challenge, and if you die. You just you're back to being like a regular trooper or, you're, or one of these bodyguards. So you get it yeah. makes you play more carefully. I do I do enjoy this one. Um, I, now let me ask you this, uh, and, and we can go back to who your favorite hero is. But do you feel as though this game could really benefit from um, a random 
button, like, you know, if you're playing Mortal Kombat or something, you can hit random and it'll choose a random character for you to play as. I almost feel like this could stand for mm-hmm. ha- to have, like, a random game mode selector. If you're just going in and killing some time and playing, instead of having to to pick one and stick with it, just say random and it, have it just shift you from mode to mode or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there are, um, like I know DICE is, and EA has done this with, with Battlefield, is that you can, there are medley, you know, medley rooms where... There you go. And it's either like this, either Where the you're same singing, mode on a basically? bunch of different maps, or the same map in a bunch of different modes, huh? Where you're singing, so it's a medley. It's a medley mode. Yeah, right. You will, will play, play as Luke as Skywalker. Mia. You won't sound like Luke Skywalker, but you will play as Luke Skywalker. Although his oh. is his is fairly close. Now, um, so your favorite hero, to answer the question. In Battlefront. Uh, yeah. In, uh, in I'm assuming be. in Battlefront. Yeah, it would have to be. It would have to be. Vader. Really? Yeah, me too. For sure. Now, I will say, outside of it, if you're talking Legends continuity, the one that we will, that Jody and I, my wife, have already decided we will name our first male child after if we have a male child, Cade Skywalker. Cade Skywalker huh. is the guy. That, the, and she's like, you're just going to name him after a drug addict? Yes. Yes, I am, because he's that awesome. And I'm... Oh, die, Palpatine! Damn! Nope, Palpatine finally killed me with seven health left. Uh, let's see, so Chevy... I was like, Ch- C-H-E-V-V-Y. It looks like a W from here, but V. I says, how do you switch to third-person uh, view, trying on the Xbox, keep switching back? Um, all right, so switching naturally is just a press, at least on PS4, it's just the down on the D-pad, but you can go into your options. I think it's the game options, is the one with like the joystick symbol, and you can choose... Uh, to spawn either it's 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 1p or 3p which is first person or third person mode which is not an option that was in the beta that i'm really glad that they added here yeah uh let's see lewis asks uh, it's bresadola i think is how you say his name bresadola uh you go look uh are we oh he's dead, uh, not a native english speaker sorry uh are we gonna go see the new star wars films in the cinema in the theaters i am but i still don't have my freaking tickets because our local theater is being remodeled so they only have oh i'm han solo now uh they only have ticket pre-sales available through like december 2nd so i'm just constantly checking every day <laughs> waiting for them to have pre-sales mm-hmm. for force awakens um you i'm assuming you're gonna go but have you got your your tickets your uh, are, are you oh, doing yeah. like a marathon or anything? No, we're just um, going. You know, my wife and I and some friends we're gonna watch it, and uh, you know, should be should be great. <laughs> Sweet. I mean, we um, do, do have advanced tickets. So. Are you going to do now? I I mentioned that I'm doing the. Uh, hey, I know where they're shooting me from. I just I need to get an angle on the bastards. Um, I, I'm doing the the whole. Uh, that's how you do it. I'm doing the whole uh, canon rewatch marathon where I'm watching all the films and Clone Wars and <laughs> um, uh, Rebels and basically all the the canon video stuff with the exception of the story reels. Are you going to be doing maybe a film marathon before you actually see it or something? Uh, yeah, I actually got a, a group of people that we're probably going to watch uh, watch them all before before the movie comes out. One through six, or are you gonna do like a uh, one, uh, like four, five, one, two, three, six, or some other kind of uh, viewing order? Yeah, my, uh, I guess my viewing order would be um, four, four, five, one, two, three, six. Yeah. Because I feel yeah. like you know, it, obviously it starts with the original, gets into uh, Empire Strikes Back. We find out, you know, Vader drops the bomb and everything on Luke and. Um, then it's kind of, okay, so let's explore how did we get to that point? What's the history behind it? Right. You know, and, uh, and go from there. And then, um, in episode six, we get the final, uh, resolution of all those conflicts that have been set up. Yeah. I think you'd I almost like have to, pretty you'd almost, at... you almost have to either show kids original trilogy and then prequels, or you'd have to do the... The four, five, one, two, three, six. Otherwise, you lose a lot of the "I am your father" impact. Um, and a question asked mm-hmm. was whether the stream crashed. Not that I know of. I'm still getting that stupid bad connection to the server. This will affect your gameplay notice every couple of seconds. It seems like. Um, 
but it, the, it still says elapsed time is still going. So. Die! Kill assist? Dang it! I was trying to get the actual kill, but that's alright. Here's something interesting. I spawned the squad shield up on top of the platform. Yeah, which is what I just stepped in, apparently. Down, and extended down below the platform as well. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> sort of like a ball. Cool. And see, that's that's what you have to do as, as Leia. That's where she functions the best. Right, a she's, a, she's more support as... than she is active attack. Right. And, uh, you know, and what I try to do is, is stick out a hero health power up so the first person, you know, if the Han player or Luke player decides they need help, they can always come back mm -hmm. and get it, or, or what have you. But that actually helped me quite a bit. I was see. getting the, uh, doing, trying to get the stars on the survival mission, or I think it was survival missions, um, or maybe it was one of the other. I forget. But I was trying to do one of the, the single player things. So I guess it was one of the battles, and one of them is you have to complete the battle with like 75% health left or something. So I went with Palpatine. Oh, it was, a tra it was one of the training ones. It was a training one where you're training as the Dark Siders to show you how to use the the heroes. And one of us get right. you know 75 percent health, and I just played as Palpatine to make sure that you know if I got low on health, I could just spawn one of those and uh, and use it for myself. All villains defeated. So for those who are watching this who aren't quite familiar with how this works, basically you'll have a full team, but only three of you spawn as the heroes or the villains. And it'll tell you between rounds which you're going to play as. And it seems to be random. Sometimes it seems like maybe it's based on, you know, which one you kill. Like, like you know, if you kill one, you get to be next uh, as a hero. And that seems to be what it says in the guide, but doesn't seem to actually be what it does in the game. And the guide is wrong at other times, too, uh, unfortunately. But what's happening here is you're playing, and you're constantly playing. But if you're playing as a hero and you die, that counts for the other team as taking out one of your heroes, and you respawn as a regular soldier. Uh, or a bodyguard type soldier that has a little bit of extra capabilities and the goal is to be the first side to take out all three heroes on the other side and as soon as it's basically three strikes that t that side loses and you get a point up there at the top uh, and the points continue on to figure out who it is that wins uh, essentially here uh, if you had five things to change with the game or I guess uh, ask, Lewis's question first was asked if, uh, if we're playing Black Ops 3 I am not I've basically given up on Call of Duty personally uh are you playing black ops 3 uh no i haven't touched it okay uh and then uh, if you had five things to change with the game what would you change i think my number one is a freaking campaign i think that's number one let's see, add a campaign yeah, now see there's we're, we're gonna part company on that too because really battlefront is not you know the game that they're gonna be developing with visceral that's the that's where the campaign is really going to be at. Yeah. Um, this is. You're not. You're not one of these the people who's going to tell me that these... Battlefront doesn't have a campaign that I'm going to have to shoot down because every Battlefront game except for one has had a campaign, right? Well, now Battlefront Two was not a campaign. Battlefront Two had that, a campaign. It had story missions it's not that a campaign. It's, that inc no, that included see, stories. It, they were stories. You were going to Camino and quelling the rebellion. There were actual stories for okay, the things but you were see, playing. They were just single player walkthroughs. Loosely based around a plot, but basically you go to it every had map a and plot. do something. And that's right, not it really had a, a plot. It was it was really an adventure. Campaign, it, it's it's it was an it was a story. It's on the timeline at this point. But okay, so there's that one. So two we can say is sort of an iffy one, but then you got everyone since it, Renegade Squadron, Elite Squadron, and what three was going to be. And in fact, three, mm -hmm. the story of three was actually going to be the story that became Elite Squadron on the mobile devices. Those are stories Battlefront can have, them, but I, I understand the idea that it's not, this isn't the one to expect a story in because we're getting it with Visceral, but I don't think one necessarily negates the other. But it, that's five no, things but, you uh, would change if you could. I personally okay. would like to that's add a, a freaky <laughs> campaign. <laughs> like you bet. Don't make me. Don't make me come out there and beat you, sir. I know you're much, much, <laughs> much, 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 much taller than I am, sir. But I can headbutt you in the gut. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> One of the few podcasting community people I've actually met in person in India, Jim. When Jim is wearing his fedora, it's like a shadow over <laughs> me. I'm just saying, that's that much shorter. Uh, all right, so that's one thing for me. What's the first thing you would 
uh, you would change. This may be our last question because we're getting into about um, uh, an hour and and ten minutes here, just about. Um, first thing you would change about Battlefront, this particular oh, Battlefront. Boy. Oh, that's really it's really hard. Um, I know there's something like. Um, Even if it's just like more of something so that that's good, something that you would change. That's odd. There's a hero power. I, I don't really know. I, I can't be a hero power up. I guess. Oh, it's a hero know, health. Power we up? can speculate about hmm. what's going to happen in the, in the future. You know, with expansions and or uh, DLC and whatnot. Um, I don't know. It, it just it, it's hard to me. Hard for me to put my finger on. Really, I, I just I don't. It's not. That, and I'm not saying like, oh, this game is perfect. You know, it's not. It's not perfect for you know several reasons. I guess. But <gasps> I, you know, for me, it's good enough. I think that. I don't know, I'm going to keep playing it for a while, but... Yeah. I mean, um, I'm, I'm going to be playing it a lot. I just... I just... I can see... Uh, my argument would be that there's just room for... And there, there's always things that'd be nice to improve or to add. I think that... Uh, like, I would like to see a more... I kind of like to see a class system back again. Um, so yeah. that there, fe there feels like a difference between characters. I'd like to see more of a... Uh, a deeper progression system. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that necessarily means progression for the characters or even something like, you know, you unlock a weapon. I know now you can unlock a weapon, you can upgrade the weapon, but maybe like a customization of weapons, although that kind of gets, that gets, it, it, knowing EA, that gets into microtransaction territory probably. Buy these parts mm -hmm. for $5. Um, I would, yeah. I do think that the, uh, depending on what we get out of the DLC, one change I would make is I would make the DLC season pass and the individual D DLC less costly uh, because mm -hmm. I think that, that was a big shock to some people's senses um, and uh, uh, I don't know I think that it's it, it's hard to say because I want to like one of the things I would have said is it would have been nice to have more maps it would have been nice to have more planets but that's coming with the DLC so I kind of feel like some of the stuff that I could say at this point it is stuff we're going to get I mean we're already getting you know later what within within the month uh, in fact actually within about a week of when we're recording this I mean we're going to get a new planet mm -hmm. two new maps and a new game mode and it's free so I'm kind of like eh. right <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm good for that um uh, thank you to Lewis and Jamie who are popping out. Looks like um, the uh, oh, I'm playing as Leia. That that's one thing I would change. Mm. I would tell Leia that unless you're on Hoth, that outfit is fucking stupid. That's what I would say. <laughs> that if you're on Tatooine or Sullust or even Indoor, where presumably it's freaking hot, wearing that makes no sense. Now I'm not saying wear the slave Leia thing. In fact, I think it's an interesting dynamic that that's where a lot of folks' brains immediately go. Um, particularly given the recent controversy about Disney trying to sort of put a moratorium on it. Um, but I gotta mm -hmm. say, anything, any other outfit would seem to make more sense. And actually, I have I have the foggiest idea what exactly I'm doing right now with Leia, because I've actually never played as Leia before. So I know that I can do a shield kind of thing. I know she can toss out a health, though I'm not sure which one that is. I'm assuming it's the R1. Is that health? Yeah, she just threw out a health thing. I'm not entirely sure what the... Oh! Vader's coming for me! I'm not sure what the... Uh, the R2 one is for her. Where'd the health thing go? Oh, darn it. Ooh, uh, Vader! R2? Yeah! How did I like that? R1, R1 thing? Yes, the R1 thing for her. The, the, um, sorry, the L1, be, uh... the L1 thing. Sorry, I meant the L. It was it's, it's the L1 thing, but then it tells you to hold down R2, or to use yeah, R2. The trooper bane. It, you push L1. Trooper bane. You can fire through from the shield, from inside the shield, um, uh... and it's basically a one-shot kill sort of deal, oh, okay. but not a rapid fire. So. But you have to be inside the shield to do it. You don't have to be. No, you don't have to be, but it enables her to, to take pot shots at people from inside the squad shield. That's cool. I did I did not know that. 
That, that's a horrible Carson. I should never try to do a Johnny Carson while I'm playing a video game. I did not know that. I did. Yeah. I did not know that. You have to sort of, you have to sort of tighten, tense up the lower jaw and kind of widen the lip out a little bit, well, and then you can really kind of sink into it. There you go. Up, oh, up, oh, kill, kill, kill. Uh, that's. I guess that's one thing that I would ask about this, as far as like things to change, things to update. Um, this is a very... Whoa, I just got force choked. That's the first time I've ever gotten force choked. That was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> I would say that, um, uh, it is very film realistic in terms of the visuals and in terms of the idea that stormtroopers mm. are always in white. Well, almost always in white. Right. But I, one thing I would absolutely change is do something to make it so that... The side that there's not like an automatic. Uh, well, I'm a stormtrooper, so on Hoth, you're I'm basically perfectly camouflaged, and I'm a stormtrooper, so now that I'm on Endor, I'm screwed because everybody can see me. You know what I mean? There needs to be some kind <laughs> yeah. of uh, some kind of visual mm -hmm. balance. But then, how do you do that? I mean, do you have do you introduce camouflage stormtroopers like what we saw back on Kashyyyk with the clone troopers into? the game to do that uh, or do you just say screw you you got to wait until level 50 so you can get that shadow trooper so you're black instead of bright glaring white you know <laughs> right <laughs> um so i don't i don't know there's a part of me that would like to see something like that but then again i think part of that also is just lends itself to you know it's star wars every planet mm -hmm. would seem to be one ecology <laughs> sort of thing well you know i did i did think of something um Obviously, the the sparsity of vehicle power ups is, I think, right, a small problem. Um, and the in, ability in to general, find the <laughs> yeah, the hero power ups and the vehicle power ups are, are either too few and far between, or which is fine. I mean, you don't want to upset the balance of the game by having a, somebody's always a hero all the time, right? Um, but right. I don't know. It seems like it, maybe it should be always be in the same place on the map, or um, but especially the vehicle power ups. I really feel like. You know, sometimes you got uh, ATST out there, and you really need a, a mm -hmm. T forty seven to <laughs> right. destroy the ATST. You just can't find one. You know, right, right. And I think that's that was the thing that got me that that bothered me about Walker Assault in the beta was how few and far between those were. Plus the fact that in the beta there was no training on how to use them. So the Rebels mm -hmm. hadn't the slightest idea what they were doing, and you didn't have the little prompt that pops up to say, oh, by the way, if you're going to go up against a uh, an ATAT -AT and it's been weakened, what you really ought to do is... I'm Here, I'm shooting at our heroes. Uh, what you really ought to do is shoot the undercarriage of it. You know, none of that was really explained in the beta, so there was a lot of frustration. I think Walker saw it wind up being more balanced than it originally appeared it was going to be. Uh I don't, I, I'm assuming mm -hmm. they've tweaked it a little bit, but uh, just those things alone made Walker Assault make more sense to me. That, you know, you tell them to shoot at the undercarriage and teach people how to use the friggin' airspeeder, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, Flyboy Jock asked the question of how good are the destructible environments. I think it really differs. Um, like when, like when, uh, like Michael Morris and I have been going through trying to get the different star. He's from Cloud City Casino, trying to get the different stars on the survival missions together, and oh, we were yeah. playing on on Tatooine, and those destructible environments are not only beautiful to look at; they're really freaking destructible because they crumble, <laughs> like you're being like you're like hiding yeah. behind a rock. It's like hiding behind a chocolate chip cookie. So mm -hmm. in that sense, uh, I was very <laughs> impressed by. Uh, what they were doing with the destructible environments. Come on, I want to kill Leia, damn it. But I keep being, I think, I can't tell if I'm being smacked. I did kill Leia. I couldn't tell if I was being smacked or if it was my stuttering of the connection again. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the destructible environments in those senses are great, but there's, it doesn't really feel like, I mean, like, are there many destructible environments on this map at all? I haven't really noticed much. Oh, on Solace? No, no. I mean, I'm shooting. A, there we go. I shot a canister over and over again, and it exploded because it's a video game, and you know it's a barrel, so of course it's going to explode. All right. There we go. Dang it! I just shot at the emperor. My <laughs> bad, sir. Please don't kill me. Shoot at Luke. 
Yeah, that's the thing about the the Jedi uh, Luke and Darth Vader. You can, if you're flanking them, you shoot them from behind. They can't obviously block your shot, and so right. You know, that's that's the strategy is get behind them. Yep. I'm playing as Imperial Stormtrooper next round. Okay. And I really don't like Palpatine. He's the worst. To play as or to play against? To play as. Really? I liked... I li well, again, yeah, I've only played he, as him in the tutorial, but I liked... I, I don't think think that it works as well as close as you have to get for the lightning, but people have been complaining about his uh, twirly attack. I love the fact that they brought that uh -huh. in from Revenge of the Sith. I thought that was a great touch. Mm-hmm. I've never actually damaged anyone with it. Uh, well, I use it for transport. I use it. I, I do that to get close. Oh crap! <laughs> Luke is like right up me. It's like uh, El Dedo Grande right there. What I'm doing is, since I'm the Emperor, I'm too valuable. I'm hiding under the landing platform. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> actually, that is something else that was interesting that that came up. That apparently, when you are being attacked by dark side force lightning in the new canon, thanks to Beware the Power of the Dark Side, the new Return of the Jedi ad adaptation by Tom Engelberger, uh, recently reviewed it at uh, StarWarsReport.com, um, that apparently when you are being attacked by Dark Side Force Lightning, it's not just the lightning effect anymore. It's like it calls up all kinds of bad memories, and you it, it's weird. It's like it has a psychological effect on you now. A long, it's not just pain. Like when he's on the ground, like, yo, Father, please save me or help me or whatever. It's not just because he's in pain. It's because he's having all these different horrible things going through his mind because of it, which I thought was mm -hmm. inspired, but different. Hmm. <laughs> but, all right. That scene always just creeps me out anyway that, because the lightning goes across his teeth and I'm like, ha 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 ha. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, damn. You, have, you know, metal fillings. Oh. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've had enough issues. I've got five crowns because of various root canals and whatnot. So for me, anything going after your teeth, ugh, uh-uh. Mm-mm. Not for me, Holmes. Oh, crap. I didn't realize yeah. that Vader could basically levitate. That's pretty cool. Now, if I could just stop. You can. Oh, yeah, Vader. Like, I did a jump, and it was basically like, it was a, it, I more or less levitated. Come on. Kill them all. Did I kill anybody? Nope, apparently I didn't. I just killed Luke, though. Yeah. I gotta find... Where is everybody else? Oh, there's Han. Han being like a punk up there on the catwalk. On the catwalk. Yeah. I was going to say, is he doing his little turn? On the <laughs> He's catwalk? doing his little turn on the catwalk, yeah. <laughs> it's almost as bad as when uh, uh, there was some kind of... There you go. Kill Han. There was a commercial recently that had the uh, the same song as uh, Night at the Roxbury. And I've never seen Night at the Roxbury, but I know that so oh, well yeah. from Saturday Night Live that I started doing the little head bop. And my wife, who is uh, nine years my junior, is looking at me like, oh my god, you're so retarded, man. Like, you can't, you can't call me that. That's politically incorrect. But she's just looking at me like I, I need a, a, a helmet and a drool cup when I'm doing that dance. Like, thanks, honey. <laughs> really. Way to be supportive of my dancing. There we go. <coughs> Die, Leia. <laughs> now, if I'm if I'm trying to force choke somebody, am I holding down L1 or am I just tapping it? I think you can just tap it. Because and... I keep like grabbing somebody and then dropping them. I'm not sure if it's because I I'm I'm tapping it, but I'm double tapping or what the crap oh. I'm doing. Well, Double tap. I play, I just hit it. I just hit it and then just keep on walking, and they just <laughs> they float up in the air and die. Oh crap! Oh wait, no, that was. See, now I need to put a helmet back on. I've got this character with the bald head and the goatee and stuff because I thought he looked cooler, but I need to put a helmet on because I keep thinking that I'm a rebel. Like Vader will show up, and I'm like, shit, it's Vader! And no, no, Vader's on my right. side. <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I, I keep the helmet I'm on my sorry. stormtrooper. I'm a purist that way. Yeah, yeah. Although speaking I of, uh, uh, I will. I am very impressed that now we have. Uh, we finally, they're finally making more out of the female stormtroopers. You're finally seeing sort of a recasting of the, uh, uh, the Empire, 
Uh, they're, they're actually, it's almost like it's the, it's the little thematic details that they're doing a little bit differently with the, with the new canon instead of really going for big, epic, sweeping things, it seems like. Um, mm -hmm. But we got, with, bat, with the Battlefront Twilight Company game, we actually have a female stormtrooper who, granted, doesn't take a lot of a role in a story, but we see and kind of get a human face for stormtroopers, and this time it happens to be a woman. Um, I thought that was a pretty... Mm -hmm. Unusually, and, and it's on Sullust of all places. So you get that tie into the Princess huh. Leia comic with Nine Numb, but then also tied into this, um, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Die! See, the Empire has women on the front lines before America does. Huh. So we still have sort of those limited role kind of things for the front lines, as I recall. All right, so we are at three mm -hmm. to two. Yeah, we're winning. Slowly but surely, and and oh, I get Jim. to be Darth. I get to be Darth Vader. Ooh, I get to be Palpatine. Protect yeah, me, my, my apprentice. Last, uh, probably last, uh, last Matt. game here. Yeah, me too. Because I think because we're already up, and I just got a tr uh, a trophy for hell if I know what. Um, yeah, because we're at about an hour and a half. That's usually pretty long for these live streams. Plus, uh, uh, wife is at work, but uh, she will eventually be home. Uh, will we see? Alien Stormtroopers, you know, that'll be interesting to see because it does seem like the one bias that we still see with the Empire does still tend to be fairly human, it seems like. Um, although, um, Yuptashu is, uh, is a Twi'lek, as I recall. Oh, crap, it's Luke! Here, have some lightning and have some bad memories. A little call back there. Um... I found it interesting that as Star Wars became more diverse with uh, gay characters recently, like Delian Moore's in Lord of the, Lords of the Sith, there is a reference mm -hmm. to basically Palpatine, like he cares about her efficiency more than he cares about that sort of thing, but he does have sort of a bias there. So I'm wondering if sort of the, uh, the bigotry angle of the Empire is going to change and it won't be bigotry on a, a species standpoint as much or a gender standpoint, but it may be more of like... You know, kind of like Star Wars changing with the times in other respects, even in changing with times with the diversity, that the, the the concept of what is the primary form of bigotry under the surface will start to be more uh, uh, shifting. Like maybe even like a – heck, these days it could be even a political view type of, of intolerance that the Empire will have more so than uh, – than otherwise, it's just find it interesting that they played around with it. I'm coming! I see you, Indiana Vader. Are you dead? Because I, I, I don't... There you are. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, I was trying to come to you because I see you got low health. I'm like, I'm coming, Beanie! Oh, that didn't work. She just beat me right the last second. Uh, let's see. Let's see. If I like the Rebels, but my mom gives me Empire socks, does that make me part of the Empire? You know, I don't know because I remember the Phineas and Ferb special where they're looking for Darth Vader's socks and those, he, those people wound up eventually siding with the right side. So, you know... Now, tell me you saw the Phineas and Ferb special, are, Jim. Are Darth Vader's socks a horcrux? Are they a horcrux? Yes, I, I saw it. Okay. I saw it. Yeah. I, just, I, I actually have a CD in the car. Yeah, it's, yes, it's a CD, but it's a CD with MP3s on it, so I'm not quite as much in the past. Uh, but I got a disc in the car that's got the soundtrack to that special on it, because, yeah, that was pretty sweet. I was no, very I impressed like by this. Phineas and Ferb's Star Wars special. Oh, crap, yeah. it's Luke. Oh. oh, and I got killed by Leia. You got a Jedi running right by you with a lightsaber, and you get picked off by the princess halfway across the screen. Welcome to Battlefront. All right, folks, if you got any... I, I'm assuming there's probably a slight delay on the, uh, the stream, but if you've got any questions or things you want to toss out there for our last little bit here, go for it, because we are on what is probably going to be our last match here. Just because of a standpoint of, of uh, time and whatnot, as we mentioned a moment ago. It's odd, I have not shown up as the that special stormtrooper yet. Um, the special stormtrooper? I forget what you even call it. Like, you know how, like, you get, it's almost, it's supposed to be that one trooper uh, in, in these matches is a special trooper? Um... Is, I forget how to even say it. It's like a like you get a heavier weapon. 
And the other night when I was playing this, I, when I wasn't streaming, I was constantly that trooper. But it gives you that option mm -hmm. on respawn to be that one. Huh. I don't... So. Unless you're talking about Palpatine's honor guard? Guy? Yes, yes, that. That guy. Okay. I will play as yeah, Darth Vader that, next round. Can... I, and you're number one and I'm last place on the team. That is the way it should be because I suck with my level 8 and you're in your level 29. There we go. And uh, Yodachu, if you have not already done so, make sure you've sent a, uh, a friend request on PSN to uh, Darth underscore Soul. That's my username here. That way, uh, when we do, when I am on here, whether it's uh, doing the streaming or not, that you could hop on. I uh, say that he's uh, has to wait a little bit before being able to do a uh, to hop in on the game. Die! Dang it! Die, Han Solo! It's Han Solo. It's Han Solo. You should die just because of what happened on Kinect Star Wars Solo. Although I love, I gotta say, as much as as that game gets crap, I really actually enjoy the the dance aspect and a couple of other bits. And I could do that, you know, I'm Han Solo dance all day. I absolutely love it. That and uh, uh, though I think it's is it Selena Gomez that has a song naturally that I hate. That then they turned into uh, the force uh, comes naturally on that game and I love it. It's it's horrible, but yeah, I, I I almost feel like I need to get need to figure out a way to do some some uh, Xbox One or Xbox 360 streaming. But right now I don't have a setup to be able to do that yet. Uh, okay, Yodachu as in Yoda and Pikachu, or as a uh, oh lord as. As Chad, mm -hmm. I'm gonna dip back here into fan, to fan film history here. As Chad Peter of Sex, Drugs, and Natalie Portman, the fan film trilogy, had one of the characters say in the first part of that, Pikachu, a little yellow rat that shoots lightning out of his ass. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, uh, yep, we lost, we lost, man. You're still number one, but yeah. Okay, and... I'm number one. Better than being number two, because then you might be a little corny. <laughs> it took him a second, well or played. there's a delay, but it's good. It's good. Let's see. Am I going <laughs> to jump up? Am I going to jump up to rank nine? Hell no. Of course not. As Finn says in the new tr in oh, one of the new clips, hell no. Whatever. <laughs> there we go, and... All right, man. That was fun. Yes. Yes, fine. Well, uh, folks, we will, uh, of course, uh, pop up again, I'm sure. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, close out the live stream and see what has uh, been unlocked. And uh, I'll catch up to you another time. Thank you for watching all. Thank you, Jim, for joining me uh, live as opposed welcome. to just uh, watching me die in a regular game. <laughs> 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 all right. See you, Jim. Hi. All right, you dodge. You tell you what, you dodge. You. I will go ahead, uh, and I will just I will jump into uh, Fighter Squadron once since you're asking here before I close it out. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, Jim. Jim is not a big fan of Fighter Squadron. I love Fighter Squadron because it's different. I mean, I like it, but I just I stink at it. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible at everything on here. No, okay. I'm, no, I'm good at survival. I'm good at survival, but it's not something where I play against other people, so that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. All right, later, man. All right, bye. Yeah. There we go. And I'm assuming this shows up in the corner as like this weird blurry box where it says uh, who has left the party. I noticed that earlier. So, yes, yeah, so we'll do one match of Fighter Squadron. How would you like to customize your character? I don't. It's freaking Fighter Squadron. Let's see if I can actually be... Oh, I'm the Rebels this time. X-Wing or A-Wing? I'm going A-Wing this time. On the way. And aim into that. I would also add probably Chicago after what's happened today. Uh, or or after, after what happened last year and what was released as well. There's the, there's the terrorism angle with Paris. There's also a domestic instability uh, issue in the U.S. right now with what's going on in Chicago. Uh, okay, time to try to do something except, oh my god, I hate this horrible connection. 
Vehicle damaged. Damaged! Die! It's my impression of a, a C-3PO whenever the little gross dude at Jabba's palace came after him. Ooh! Come on. Okay, so I'm way up here. I need to find myself a power-up because I really want to try to be one of the heroes. I've never done a hero on this. I have killed the Falcon before. I have killed the... Uh... Oh, crap. I've killed... Uh... The Falcon, I've killed Slave One. Oh, shit! <laughs> Whoopsie! But I've never actually uh, played as either of them. All right, let's try an, an X-Wing. It says I need to attack him. Come on. Oh, that freaking stuttering. Did I stutter? Did I stutter? Yes, apparently, because of a shit connection. I'm assuming you guys can see that same thing that I keep seeing, the little notice that constantly is coming up telling me that my connection sucks. Here they come. But yeah, I'm actually, um, kind of on, the, on the more serious note, uh, uh, I'm actually based out of Atlanta. So Atlanta has sort of that that uh, an un unpleasant history with its, uh, of its own with terrorism, not on the same scale or or with a uh, Islamic extremists in that case, but in terms of the Olympics um, back in the '90s. So every time the t the, the subject comes up, it's a very uh, this this area is very serious about safety. The biggest airport uh, or the most busy airport, I think, in the world, definitely in the United States, is just. Um, with Thanksgiving weekend and all, it's definitely a high alert time for us as well. Um, and the hope would, of course, be that nothing will happen. Um, but I think that's always the thing. I mean, nobody would have expected 9-11. Nobody would have expected um, Friday the 13th now and so forth. So, yeah. Just got to hope that our men and women who keep us safe domestically are doing well, but also I, I would say, especially with Thanksgiving, that uh, if you are serving overseas and watching this, or you have family members serving overseas, our thoughts are, of course, with them as they're um, not able to be home for the Thanksgiving weekend. And I, know I personally appreciate their service. I've got some people in the family who have been uh, veterans who are now back out of harm's way. I know one of our fellow former podcasters who also just wrote... Um, uh, a story for Star Wars Insider is on active deployment right now, though I'm not sure where. Um, so we kind of keep them in our thoughts at the time. Uh, uh, die! All right, time to actually start trying to not suck. Kill Boba Fett! Boba Fett! Boba Fett! Where? Although this could be... I guess in this era it has to be Boba, but if it's a slave one, it could now be... It could be Django. It could be Boba. It could also be Aura Singh. Or Hondo Onaka, from what we learned from the Clone Wars. But thankfully, we got at least a little bit of a sense that this is original trilogy era, so probably actually Boba. Die! Die, 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 die. Uh oh! Oh, crap. I lost it. There he is. It's such a distinctive sound for Slave One. I mean, not just on the game, but just in general, like the, the distinctive sound that Slave One has. And I lost him again, so whatever. Go for a power up. Oh, and it's a repair. No, it's a cooldowns refresh faster, so I can launch a torpedo and then launch into. I heard you. I heard that. Beep, 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 beep. Slave One. Cannon sound. Where is he? There's the bastard. Why is it not lock on? 
freaking lock on to the bastard. Like, I'm not even bothering to play with the objectives of the game. I'm just like, I'm going to kill Boba Fett. <laughs> I didn't shake that missile. Instead, I ate that missile. Our transport ship evacuated safely. Oh, no, I've lost it, but that's okay. Excuse me. We were up a little bit late cooking last night. So, now I'm like, yeah. Zombified and still have more personality as a zombie than any of the characters on The Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, getting tired of it. Sorry. Q. Oh, Millennium Falcon. Hello. Hello. What have we here? That was bad. That was like a combination of uh, Lando and Obi Wan. Hello there. Stop it! Oh crap. Enemy locking and I have there we go. Victory In the words of uh Newt Gunry, I suppose. Yeah, totally suck. But that's what I get for barely playing it all now. Ooh, Mike Scott's nice job. Most starfighters destroyed, most kills. Good job, whoever you are! Ooh, objectives, 40. Yes, I did something related to the objectives. Not sure what, but I sure did. All right, and last thing, we we'll just look and see what just got unlocked and then call it a day. Unlocks two new weapons to purchase. The CA-87, a.k.a. the Jawa Zapper. And the A-280C, which actually I've heard fairly good things about. Eh, won't worry about any of them just yet, but there's where the new unlocks apparently came in. So, again, thank you for watching, folks, and uh, I'll be back with more of this, uh, with more guests. Not sure who will be next. Maybe Jeff Kinda, maybe Michael Morris, uh, maybe Mark Herleman when he finally gets his PS4. Uh, we shall see, but thank you for watching, and uh, be back again soon.